I'm eating that beef. Well, why'd you tease me with it? <laughs> On this episode. Those are the two that will be butchering. We're gonna butcher these two rabbits today, huh? I meet a couple committed to teaching their children about self-sufficiency and understanding exactly where their food comes from. We just realized that the foods that we're putting in our bodies, we wanted to be the best. Of course, it hasn't been without its challenges. I mean, we've gotten death threats for doing what we do. Seriously? Yes. Yeah. About eight years ago, I did a story about where our food comes from. So I went to Michigan and I met a mobile butcher. His name was Earl. And I rode around with Earl for the better part of a day, getting a sense of what his life was like. And at one point, we stopped at a little farm out in the western part of the state and met a guy who had raised a cow for the last couple of years for the express purpose of eating it. So Earl let me shoot the cow. And then Earl allowed me to help him cut the cow up into four big pieces and put it in the back of a truck. And then we drove the truck to a place and turned those four big pieces of cow into enough food to feed the family who owned the cow for the better part of a year. Anyway, it was very educational. And to this day, I always know whenever that episode reruns because I get lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of angry mail telling me to stop. <laughs> Turns out people don't really like to know where their food comes from. So when I heard about a guy here in the suburbs of Atlanta who was doing something similar with something that wasn't a cow, and was getting some blowback for it, I was intrigued. So I came here to get more intrigued. Meet the Lamies, Christopher, Jenna, and their adorable kids, Augustus and Jolene. Christopher is an industrial artist, and Jenna's a flight attendant. Both have agreed to live a simple life in order to show their kids what matters most. Today, they've invited me to their home outside of Atlanta for a family meal, I won't soon forget. I love it. Look, it's, it looked like you art directed it for us. It was beautiful. We always make this beautiful because the children are gonna remember it. Yeah. And um, it's only once a quarter we do this. Augustus, what are you doing? Spinning. You're spinning like a whirling dervish. <laughs> Here. Watch this. How high? As high as the hawk in low. As high as a hawk in love. That's as high as it goes, I guess. As high as a what? A hawk in love. <laughs> Your boy just said throw me as high as yeah. a hawk in love. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> you have all the essentials, actually. You've got the hammock, you've got the fire, you got the kid on the swing, and you've got a, uh, what do they call it, a hutch? Yes, yeah, a rabbit hutch. A rabbit hutch. We call it the bunnies and the bees. Let's look at the bunnies and the bees. All right. Those are the two that we'll be butchering. We're gonna butcher these two rabbits today, uh -huh. huh? And how old are these rabbits, you figure? Um, uh, I personally don't know. You don't personally know? <laughs> <laughs> these are about six, six months. And so how often do you call? Every quarter. Yeah, if you wait three and a half months, they'll multiply on you. Like, well, like rabbits. Like rabbits. Hi there. Yeah. Let me yeah. officially say hello, oh, yes. Mike. My wife, Jenna. Jenna. <laughs> Jenna. Is this Jolene? This is Jolene. Jolene, come say hi. Hi, there, sweetheart. Hi, I'm Mike. Hi, my name's Jolene. Hello, Jolene. How are you? I love your hat. Thank you. Here, show off your hat. Say hi to Taylor. He's a nice man. Great <laughs> to him, too. Hi, He's Taylor. got, look at his hair. Isn't his hair fantastic? Yes. So My brother is too. Well, he, he's got the best hair around, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> What's going on with you guys in the world? You're, you're doing some off-the-grid things, but you're on the grid. Is one, that step, the... one step at a time. <laughs> We're moving in that direction. Yeah. But the direction didn't start until we had Augustus. We just realized that the foods that we are putting in our bodies, we wanted to be the best. And um, at the time, we couldn't really afford it. Uh, where's that time we were sitting in Whole Foods parking lot and we're counting cash and it's raining and I'm just thinking, oh gosh. And just that sigh, my wife knew like, oh, she said, babe, you've got to start hunting. I said, that makes sense. So, of course it yeah. makes sense. It's made sense for like millennia. Yeah. And well, he was this motorcycle driving artist living downtown. We had our fancy loft. Yeah, and, tragically hip. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> tragically hip. And then got pregnant and I remember the exact moment where I was trying to shove down this chicken sandwich that, you know, the only place that didn't have a line 
And I remember looking down and I'm like, oh, I see that oil water mixture that's kind of rainbowy. And all I could think is like. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, as a rule, when you can see your reflection in food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> generally speaking. But I couldn't do Just it. Just couldn't eat it. I couldn't eat it. So there you are in the parking lot of a really nice grocery store and the math is not working out and you decide I'll raise rabbits and eat them. Well, it started with well, the hunting. Well, it started with hunting. Dear. How'd you learn? Well, I had some good friends who kind of gave me some of the knowledge I needed and I watched some YouTube videos. I read some books, but it comes naturally. I found that moving in this direction, whether it be growing vegetables or raising rabbits, there's something that I feel is kind of like built in us a little bit. Yeah, I mean, what's more primal, really? I assume your kids are involved in, in all of it. The children and I, we bottle feed the babies, but we don't typically do the harvesting. They're yeah. mentally ready, but I, I, the strength and the height you need to have yeah. to be able to break the neck, um, I don't want them to have a bad experience for yeah, the first time. It should be beautiful. We don't want anything to yeah. suffer. Right, of course. You know. To sum up, the Lamies eat what they kill, a concept as old as mankind, but to many young families today, absolutely and completely foreign. It's important, to, it doesn't really hurt them to grab their ears, mm -hmm. and then I put my hands on their belly. <sighs> because you don't want to get cut by their claws. Sharp? <laughs> Razor sharp. All right. I got it. Look, I'm, I'm happy to assume a uh, observational posture. Okay. All right, would you like to say thank you, Augustus? <sighs> thank you for being a part of our lives. Thank you for continuing ours. There. We won't waste your meat. Watching Christopher work, it's hard not to think about those who have come before and just how radically our lifestyle has changed over the years. To be off and on the grid at the same time, is an interesting thing. I think about like the stories my grandmother would tell me. Think of the same thing. They'd go outside, wring the neck of the yeah. chicken. If you look at the stretch of time that humans have been alive, it's only been like a millimeter of that stretch of time that we've been so disconnected from our food source. Yeah. And to know what a healthy animal is, to see it, and when you take it apart yourself, you know you're, you are connected. Oh, you're connected. That, for sure. Grab your rabbit and you turn it upside down and you massage the, uh, the, the pee out, the urine. So just run your fingers down and you just massage mm -hmm. that. How many rabbits would you have to have to really rely upon them as your primary source of? So it takes us about six to eight deer a year yeah. to get to the next season. Um, and if we mix our bunny meat with that deer, we can get to, we can move through the year eating food that we provide for ourselves as meat. Right. So we, we look at it like 80% of our meat protein comes from the, the meat that we're growing or, or, or hunting, we're hunting ourselves. Really? 80%. Is there a goal to get to 100 or? Of course. In time. In All time. right. Can I get a photo of us doing this right here? Yeah. Babe, just one shot and then I'll never ask again oh, because right. this is so hard to believe. <laughs> Why? Why is it hard to believe that we're, that we're here? Because even when you guys reached out to us, my reply was, I don't think we're the right people because what we do is kind of controversial, I believe, right now. Yeah. And as polarized as things seem, I mean, we've gotten death threats for doing what we do. Seriously. Yes. Yeah. For uh, our children, you know? <laughs> when they say death threats, they're not even kidding. Straight up intimidation, usually delivered from online cowards, as anonymous as they are outraged. I just thought that, you know what? Regardless, this is how we live our life. I'm sure there's others out there who would like to do it, who already do it. And we believe that we're just being more sustainable for doing so. The only way you can be outraged by that is if you spent your whole life not seeing it. And if you are able to blind yourself and make a, a disconnect to somehow that inevitable road to your plate. Yeah. Like, you know, here's here's your plate. Like there's a meat. rabbit tree somewhere. There's yes. a meat tree. Yeah. This is out there, right? And, and I don't know. Know what else I don't know? 
if there's more than one way to skin a rabbit. This, this rabbit's knife proof. <laughs> what am I so clearly doing wrong? <laughs> yeah, because it's not the knife. Poor workman always blames his tools. Oh, you're just pulling the hair. It's thick. They've got their winter coats on. So once you're in... Well, you just made that look embarrassingly simple, didn't you? Pull it, pull it back just like that. And we're just going to take the sweater off is what we call it. Remember the 80s? Remember the Lucky's Rabbit's foot? I do. I was just a, I'm a wash in irony right now. <laughs> nice. Then the hide should be free. And sling it right behind you right on that fence. Here we go. Time now to separate that which we use from that which we don't. And for the record, we use pretty much everything. Good, because you don't want to, you don't want to puncture the gut. So that's no. all we're doing. And then you make a small incision, right? Mm -hmm. And that opens up the uh, abdominal cavity. Mm -hmm. Now we stick our fingers in, and we run the blade. We unzip it, and then slowly pull pull everything out. Just roll it out, and then you'll see the lungs, the heart, and then you scoop down. And you'll see the kidneys there. You see that fat around the kidneys? Yeah. That's a very fine fat. It'll make a great phyllo dough. A really? folded phyllo dough for a croissant. Mm -hmm. Probably not the first thought a lot of people have. Well, that's it. Is we're kind of uncovering how how nothing was wasted. How much of this did you learn from YouTube? Maybe almost all of it. Yeah. Not all of it because I had to find out a lot myself, and that's why we have our family blog because what we learn that we kind of discovered ourselves, we always give back to the community. I learned a lot of this from my mother too, she's Filipino. We visit the Philippines, this is very common. You butcher your own food. Sure. Third world country. And now, mm -hmm. take your guts, uh -huh. gather them up. And we can do that whole... Oh, it's right behind us. Yep. This goes in the garden bed. Can I put it in the same one you did, or? Yep, right here. Now we just gotta rinse them off. Well, you guys have been all over, haven't you? That's why we, uh, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons we homeschool. We travel a lot. That's part of their education. Yeah. It's one of the reasons we really live well below our means because that money goes into traveling. That is Cinque Terre. That's LA. Um, it's the Philippines. We never meant to be outsiders. Really? I think it's just kind of happened. You must enjoy it, though. I mean, ultimately. Well, being an outsider. Well, be an outlier. <laughs> an outlier. Yeah. It's not always easy blazing your own trail, so to no. speak. No. But uh... no, that's why you. That's that's why you need a blaze. All right. So let's get the front quarters off first. So with your left hand, you'll take the front quarter, mm -hmm. and lift it up, and you'll see the blade poke up. There, and you just cut right behind the blade. Mm -hmm. And you keep cutting until it's off. Let the blade work. Remember Alice's boyfriend from the Brady Bunch, Sam the Butcher? He's got nothing on me. And you braise these, it's so good. Has Augustus done this part, gone through this? Yes, Augustus and Jolene. Once you get the hang of it, you fly through it. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the rib off, so you feel that right here. Right. You can feel the last rib, the floating rib. Right there. Yeah, you feel it? Yep. So we're gonna peel that back, and we're gonna trace this line and just go down this way. The rib will guide you right to the backbone. To the backbone? Yep. So right, you're gonna go right in here and hit the backbone. How'd you guys meet? Um, we met at I was a, at waiting a, on a date. <laughs> a, we, we met at a bar. He was waiting on a friend and I was waiting on a friend. Yeah. And either friend showed? We went our separate ways. It's not like we exchanged phone numbers or anything. We just had a nice conversation. Yeah. And, and then we ran into each yeah. other for the next like five years. <laughs> And finally, you're like, knock, knock, okay, okay, fate. All right, all right, I'm listening. Enough I'm, already. <laughs> yeah, enough. So gr gr this, is, this is the loin. This mm -hmm. is the top loin and the tender loin, inside loin. That's a lot of meat. That is a lot of meat. This guy's meaty, too. Bam. Deal closed. Remember the first one you did? Yes. How'd that go? I never want to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't. But I feel like we're responsible. Like we have to do. We have to do. It. And now that I've done it, 
I'm not satisfied with doing it any other way. I'm gonna grab some, grab, grab some legs, let's get them in the pot. Sure. Just like that. Let's see, we could probably fit another one in there. And I get, pick a nice fat one, that's a front quarter. There we go. And let's make that last quarter, that last hind quarter fit. Mm. Perfect, it's like Tetris. It really is. They really nestle in there. <laughs> As the rabbit quarters simmer, the tenderloin will grill. See how tender that is after 10 days of uh, dry aging? Just really improves the texture and that color. How did you used to live? What was your... I mean, like 10 years ago, I had a mohawk. Yeah. Yeah, and I had a collection of Ducatis. And I just, vodka, Red Bull. Ducatis. Always, Ducatis, that's how we lived. And then um, the children really set us on that course that is so viscerally right. Like even in some of the highlights of my career selling artwork, it was never really fulfilling. But with the children, every time we turn a corner, they're guiding us into a place that sometimes is unexpected. But, um... It's always real. It's always real. And children force you to analyze, you know, who you are fundamentally. Yeah. I mean, they ask you so many questions that you go, wow, I... Don't, don't know. I, uh... <laughs> I didn't even know I had to navigate that right now, but let me let me just get a grasp on oh, that. Yeah. Speaking of children, with some pre-aged tenderloin roasting on the grill and the rest of the rabbit braising inside, there's not much left for me to do but hang out with Augustus and Jolene until all's ready. I got it! I got it! What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. It's been a long but enlightening day here at the Lamy's, and it looks like we're about to enjoy the fruits of our labor. While the tenderloin finishes out on the grill, the kids and I debone the rest of the recently braised rabbit. Just pull them apart, huh? Mm hmm And Jen will take over from there. Maybe I'll come down here. Teach Mike how to do it in forks? Yeah. yeah. How to debone it. You probably can't do it, use your hands when it's hot, right? I usually just get the meat off and then all the bone will be left, so I put it in a bone pile. That's a yeah. good part of the rabbit uh, hind quarter. Mm-hmm. Why don't you eat this piece? Oh, my I'm eating that piece. Well, why'd you tease me with it? <laughs> huh. All right, I think we got a lot of meat off here. And then we take these bones, we save them, and we make a stock. So oh. we make a stew. Babe, do you want to put that back in the cooker, hit it with the barbecue sauce, and let's eat? Speaking only for myself, I couldn't be more ready to eat. But before we sit down, there's one more treat to fetch. Hold it. The venison Chris has been smoking all day. Hunted, not too far from here. Currently though, I'm haunted by the tenderloin. Look at that, that's perfect. Wanna try a piece of that, Mike? Oh my God, that's amazing. That is amazing. The tenderloin is the smallest cut of meat, but oftentimes people don't taste it because it's what the hunter keeps. <laughs> it's the hunter's choice. Yeah. But usually it doesn't make it back from the field because usually we just cook it out in the field. It's like, hey, we've got it. And you say, what tenderloin? It's gone. And finally, without further ado. So you have the tenderloin, the venison tenderloin. Mm -hmm. You have the smoked venison uh, hind quarter, and then you have the, the rabbit that we just butchered this morning. Where's he? He's under the... He's right here. Augustus, do you prefer to eat with the crew or do you prefer to eat with us? Good man, okay, eat well, with the crew. Please, All right. be a gentleman. Okay. All right, go, go. Think about how many kids in the world... Are, this, is our, this is our final scene. This is how the show ends. We sit around, we have a meal, we eat what you kill, and it's beautiful. And the kid says, nah, I'm gonna go eat with the crew. <laughs> Mom, I love that. <laughs> He's a man of the people. I put it in with the crew. He's in touch Mommy, with the proletariat. Mommy, can I go eat with the crew? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Too much pressure here. Do you guys um, 
Do you guys want to eat with the crew? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 no, see, no, that's how the show ends. Mike, Mike's sitting alone in your kitchen uh, eating kimchi, wondering what happened to the program. Oh. Uh, so, and I know you're not doing any of this for notoriety or celebrity, it's probably the opposite of it, but you are chronicling it. Mm -hmm. you know, Definitely. And you're, I mean, that's, that's how we found you. So, what's the hope? Uh, as the result of, you know, we hope that it's, it's a conversation. That's all we'd like to start. Just like what any good art piece does, a it starts slow, a conversation. A slow fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And if people can understand that what we're doing, awakening. we believe we're being more sustainable as a family for what we're doing. But we're also in touch with what we're consuming. And for the children to grow up like that, that common sense ruggedness was lost with our grandfather's age. Those people who respect what we do are always older than us. And they'll remember. Well, they'll yes, remember. and they, actually our neighbor likes to stick her head over the fence and um, she's like, oh yeah, I think it's just great. My my father used to do, and she was reminiscing and, sure. and just how great she thought it was. And it's, it's good to, it's refreshing to hear that. My brother's kind of gotten into it too. Yeah. He. Um, We've gotten some people involved. Like he's, people... he's my one-upper. <laughs> no <laughs> one's crossed the line yet. No, I mean, I feel like having an honest conversation about it and and also finding out that these things are, are attainable. You could do little things. You don't have to go completely to the 100-acre farm. Right. You can still be close by. You can still do things. You don't need that much space to yeah. make a little bit of a shift. You can supplement you know yourself with just a little reality. Would you be doing this now if you didn't have kids? Probably not. Probably not. Probably just because it was just that when once you cross the threshold of an opportunity, that's the course of the rest of your life. Right. You know, every opportunity. And I don't know if we would have diverted that way. Mm -hmm. It would have been artful. I know that. But it, 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 we're always searching to be just closer to reality. But that's the tip, right? I mean, it's like, it's either a lifestyle or it's a uh, series of teachable moments. Teachable moments, a long overdue conversation, a slow fire. These are more than just catchphrases to the Lamies. These are the reasons they live how they live. These two are literally putting their money where their mouth is, along with their fundamental beliefs we hear a lot these days about quality time versus quantity time, but the Lamies seem to have found a balance between the two. A balanced life counter to many of our modern sensibilities, but one that's allowed humans to survive and flourish for thousands of years. Let me officially say for the record, your hospitality is unmatched and your resourcefulness is uh, unparalleled. And your uh, child rearing skills are unexampled. And uh, thanks for having us out. And thanks for the rabbit and the deer. Yes. Thank you very much. Hopefully it starts a conversation. Trust me. <laughs> I know. Trust me.